a very unassuming transform one might be the secret sauce here. Looks like a very scary initial act layout. All these elites with no rest site beforehand. Only one path avoiding that fate and not getting a whole lot of merit done on that path with Slime Boss waiting at the very end. This is definitely one of those Act 1s that could go really bad really fast. Which makes me not want to take 15 damage or lose our starting relic. I think both of those could be really detrimental to us. I suppose the same could be true of Transform. The only guaranteed non-negative start is three random potions. But I, I think Transforming one Strike... Heck, maybe one Defend? in this position. Maybe one defend. Hmm. And then we could remove a strike at the shop. Maybe. Depending on what we get. Sure, I'll transform one defend. That way we can't be too short on damage. We get a thousand cuts, which is actually amazing going into the slime boss. Okay. I like it a lot. I think that does mean we want to go fewer elites this act. Maybe go for this one. But more realistically, oh, that's like five or six combats in a row. No, that's seven combats in a row to go this way. No, eight combats in a row. No, that path is ridiculous. Don't do that. Nobody should ever do that. That's not a path. That's just madness. So let's not do that and do this instead. We'll fight this elite, and then we'll get the extra upgrade. Or rest. Then we don't go to this shop. Yeah, that's a much more reasonable number of enemies to fight. Not in a run. Baylor bot doesn't know what we're doing until we get to the next floor, I think, sometimes. Either way, we're starting here, that's for sure. Great turn one versus Jawworm. Take one to deal six. That feels like it's worth it for this fight. And so does playing Thousand Cuts feel worth it. I'm sure we'll play at least six cards, so it's better than playing one strike there. With the added bonus that we can't redraw a Thousand Cuts once it's in play. And that's just Peachy. Quaint. Backstab, great for killing enemies early. I really like an early backstab. We have no good use for tactician. Poison stab is adequate, but not amazing. And if we draw a thousand cuts on turn one, backstab is all the better. Yes, this feels like an excellent start here. And we can buy some potions from the potion lady, which means we can guaranteed afford to remove a strike at the shop. And we'll have two potions for the elite. Let's do it. Cultist Potion, Liquid Memories, awesome potions, especially together. That means we can definitely be defeat one elite, probably more than one elite, is my guess. What looked like a very scary start to the run has turned into pretty easy breezy, at least in the moment. Quite curious to see where it goes from here. Will we find Blade Dance? Or not. I'd also accept Cloak and Digger. Eviscerate, huh? Hmm. Eviscerate is pretty good, actually. Hits three times. Works well with some other zero cost cards, like Prepared, Calculated Gamble, that we'll want anyway. Sure. I think Eviscerate is an excellent starting stepping stone into discard stuff on Silent. Dead Branch is here, way out of our price range. Our main goal here, as we said, remove one strike, all the more doable with an Eviscerate in the deck, because it's so damage dense. Exactly, anything that builds on the discard draw engine is going to be nice with a thousand cuts. How's it going, Ivancho? We're currently not pl in not playing with uh, the extension enabled. No, uh, Slay the Relics is not on. Let's remove a strike. 
Okay, I'm feeling good. Uh, I like where we're headed here. I think this is shaping up to be something really quite quality. Can't quite kill you. The only way to full block is by using two defense here, so we're not playing Thousand Cuts. We're doing this. Excellent. Alright, great fight. Got a poison potion. Probably not as good as these other potions, though. And... No blade dance, but escape plan is quite nice with a thousand cuts. Backflap's also pretty dang good for card draw. I suppose with the thousand cuts, and because I have liquid memories eviscerate, liquid memories was also a good reason to pick up eviscerate, by the way. Uh, I'm not afraid of gremlin up. Let's pick up an escape plan here. People often ask me, is there ever a reason not to just always pick the escape plan? Isn't this card always free? And the answer is not in every fight. There are some fights that punish you for playing certain types of cards. And with escape plan, actually, the most important one to call out is the chosen in act two. Every time you play a non-attack card, chosen adds a dazed to your draw pile. So escape plan becomes minus one draw instead of net zero draw against the chosen. Chosen is also an enemy you can encounter on floor one of Act 2, and it's an enemy you can encounter twice in a row in Act 2, because you can encounter Chosen plus Bird and Chosen plus Cultist back to back. They're separate encounters in the hard pool of Act 2. This means that Chosen is a very problematic enemy to be specifically weak to, and a, a big reason to avoid escape plan, potentially. Something I wanted to call out. Time Eater and Knob are also problems, but nothing is as big a problem for this card, I think, as the Chosen is. Speaking of, here's the Knob. Seems like a good fight for the Cultist Potion. If I have to use both potions to get past Gremlin Knob, well, that's fine. We're still at pretty high potion chance, so we'll likely get those potions back. We're going to have three upgrades before the next elite fight, and it won't be Gremlin Ob, so yeah, let's just use both potions here. Call it a day. Let's see, Thousand Cuts or Two Strikes? I'd have to play 12 cards. That actually seems really unlikely to happen. Although again, the added bonus of not redrawing Thousand Cuts. I'm playing one, two, three, four cards this turn at least. Again though, it's actually quite unlikely I play 12 cards this fight. Although, if Escape Plan doesn't draw something to spend damage on... I guess we also need to know if it's Eviscerate, so we should Escape Plan first, regardless. Survivor. Alright, so yeah, we'll go Thousand Cuts then. Hopefully that one damage won't matter much. Let's see. And I think we just Liquid Memories Eviscerate now. GG. We actually gained health from the Gremlin Knob. Uh, not quite. We've already had a run with two backstabs. I'm more than willing to make this another run with two backstabs, though. Welcome, second backstab. Let's kill stuff together. And here we can finally upgrade our 1,000 cuts, which is definitely the first upgrade. Two damage per card makes it so much more worth playing. Oh my, bonus combat. Not what I signed up for, but this will do. This will do just fine. Check this out. Discard the strike, play Eviscerate for an oodle of damage. Backstab. Hmm, I can do a lot more damage by killing with a neutralize. Taking three? I'm cool with that. Let's take three here. We don't want this fool to get away with our money. That would be most unacceptable. All we should need to do is redraw this array. Dang it. 
my money. Bummer. At least you still get a card reward when that happens. Third backs to have. Hello? Let's do it. Why not? Stabby. And a singing ball. We can now gain max health when skipping cards. I really like fighting this early. Sack it to him. Thanks so much for the 10 gifted sub, Sack it. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. Sack it says, hey, Baylor, I cannot begin to tell you how much I've improved since subscribing to your YouTube a year ago. Now at Ascension 5 on all characters and 8 on clad, all because of the stream. Thanks for the endless hours of content. You're heckin' welcome, Sack it. So glad to hear your gameplay has improved. Keep on enjoying. Well, first and foremost, and learning as much as you can. It's a, it's a great heckin' game. Rather, thanks for keeping it cozy. Hmm. Probably want to upgrade Eviscerate, since that's the main damage card we're going to be redrawing. Actually, this is still leading towards a, a really efficient draw discard deck, because most of our damage just evaporates once we play it, leaving us with just a very small subset of cards. Mostly Eviscerate, Escape Plan, Survivor. We're really one prepared or two away from greatness here. I like that. I like that quite a lot. Opera Comics, why did the silent go into comedy? She was told she had a razor-sharp wit. Let's get that eviscerate upgraded. We don't have enough money for this shop to be worthwhile, unfortunately. Let's just take another card award then, which was going to be two max health anyway, at worst. And guess what? 11 times 3 is 33. Although, is it actually better to just kill the Jawworm turn one? Looks like it is. I can't get them both, can I? Doesn't look like it. Take 10. The damage, though. If you have more um, innate cards than fit in your opening or than your normal opening draw, you actually just start with all of them in your opening hand. So if we have 10 backstabs, they actually just all 10 backstabs start in our opening hand, which is very cool. Oh, reflex, come on. I should take this backflip. I'm going to take the reflex. How is our potion chance at 80%? If you have 11, then 10 will be in your opening hand and one of them will be on top of the draw pile. And that's in random order. Bottled cards are functionally identical to an eight card, so they're gonna get shuffled together essentially. So this is either Lagavulin or Sentries. Sentries should be free. Lagavulin looks like it could be a problem. If I don't take backflip, maybe. I need this backflip. Dang it. All right. Bummer. Okay, since we're going to be drawing into it a lot, let's upgrade this Neutralize so that we can stack turns of weakness on enemies. And let's fight this, which is a sleepy egg. At the very least, we can discard these backstabs and wait until we have thousand cuts in play to wake up and begin this fight in earnest. My favorite random event, ooh. I think it's the Knowing Skull, because the Knowing Skull likes to make me rich. Knowing Skull and I have a, a good agreement together. It's the one in Act 2 where you can repeatedly trade health for various benefits. This is a pretty good fight, actually, all things considered. Thousand Cuts is definitely dicing this thing to pieces. 
Beautiful. Get ice cream, allowing us to conserve energy from turn to turn. That is incredible. With three backstabs on turn one. And a terror to make enemies take more physical attack damage. Yet another card that exhausts when played. Is it actually more important to take dagger throw? Had I taken the reflex, we'd have to take dagger throw. I'm going to take the terror first, though. Amazing. Just amazing. Simply wonderful. Oh, they're both dead, right? Yeah, they're just both dead. This is 27 and 33. Glorious. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> of course, who knows if you'll ever see a second terror. You have to take the first one. Whatever, give me two max health. I don't need another, I don't need an endless agony when I have three backstabs, although it's not bad with a thousand guts. Could have taken Reflex Dagger Throw Terror. I'm okay with Backflip Terror. Especially Terror Plus. Might as well upgrade Terror because we have Ice Cream. So this energy discount is always going to get applied. I am not picking Snekowai with this deck. So I'm not worried about that. I am not at all worried about Slime Boss either. Although having more than 38 health would have been really appreciated. Admittedly. I think we'll still be fine. It's a pretty bad terror. I guess it's still better than nothing. Here, the thousand cut should uh, should do most of the work. Hopefully, although this turn looks a little rough, for sure. Half health for them is thirty. We can't get them that low. So I'll defend twice. We're gonna take a lot of damage. Twenty damage here. Go to fifteen. No energy banked either. Is a little worrisome. No debuffs headed our way, just a bunch of slimes. We really have to win this before they do that again. Yikes. Trouble detected. Okay, we can live this turn though. We can neutralize the back one and block while splitting the front one. Uh, we can even bank an energy doing that, sure. So I could play this for two damage, but I shouldn't, because we want the ice cream, so that I can play a real card. And since the thousand cuts damage is to every enemy, it's not more efficient to do it early than later. This looks very promising. We can outright kill the front slime, or we can prevent this attack. And essentially kill the back slime. It's also pretty tempting. Here's our first opportunity to maybe use the Ancient Potion for something. I think getting rid of the green slime is a pretty good idea here. Do we need to play four cards next turn to kill the green slimes? That's really unlikely, unfortunately. This is trouble. I think I am going to use the potion, because I think we're going to need all the health we can get. This turn could be very bad or very good, depending on who's doing what. Looks good to me. Yeah, looks good to me. Kill you. Block you. This green one's dead next turn. Heck yeah. All right. They're both dead. We live Twitch chat. I believe. Yes, we live. Woof. Close fight. 
but we were through thanks to the power of Thousand Cuts entirely. Without this power, we were surely doomed in that battle. Adrenaline Corpse Explosion and Alchemize are great options. What is with the potions, though? Seriously? Hello? Definitely would like Alchemize on this basis alone. Because of how uh, trolly the potion drops have been. But Adrenaline is also super sweet here. For the ice cream and Thousand Cuts and everything. I'll take the Adrenaline. It's another energy upgrade we can have, too. Ooh, and I'm down for an Astrolabe. Transform and upgrade three cards. Please, let me get rid of three strikes. Turn them into anything. Anything at all. And it will surely be better, especially if they're upgraded. Could take more energy from the Fusion Hammer. That means we'll be playing more crappier cards. I don't think that's really worth it. We could also go for more card draw every turn with Ring of the Serpents. If I had the draw discard to cycle the Eviscerate, I could actually see that being okay. But I still think we're better off transforming three cards. Into a thousand cuts, number two of footwork and another terror. This deck just got so self-synergistic, I don't even know what to say. Excellent. That's the second copy of a thousand cuts we needed. And we now truly have a thousand cuts centric deck as well. Amazing. Amazing. If only I had some shivs. One million cuts. Hmm. One million cuts from the deck, that is, because I'd like to keep removing cards. If only they did anything. Yeah. Can I fight that Burning Elite? Probably not, actually. Don't be bold and foolish. Be bold and... Foolhardy? Hmm. Well, I'd like the option to fight the Burning Elite, I suppose. More realistically, I am going to do this formation. Like those two elites. Let's start there. Greetings, bird nerds. I see you. Um. You brought your attacks today. Oh, nice. For you. To do that. Hmm. Alright, let's just not cause anybody any harm here and reconsider our actions. No? Alright. There's no reasoning with them. I see. Dang it. Well, I hoped it wouldn't come to this, but here we are. If only they'd let me, uh, have a free turn for a moment there, and we would have had a much better outcome here, but the birds with this much aggression to them are very hard to deal with. Alas. Alas. Really not able to bank up any energy with ice cream, because we have to... In order to try to prevent damage, we have to play everything we have every turn. Quite a problem, actually. Definitely would like to see another energy generating card, like a Concentrate, for example. Would be really nice. Outmaneuver... Does work, however, Flechette's Plus in this deck slaps. Get in here. That is going to be a lot of damage to a target of our choosing, especially, which is very valuable. But is it as valuable as two more cards on turn one? I don't know. I also like Panic Button a lot. It's a zero-cost block for a ton card. And we have triple backstab. Yeah, I'm going to take this. Makes us way more likely to draw terror on turn one, for example, as well. Let's see, 18 plus 33, 51. Is that right? 
Yes. Easy. Blah. I need to know if this is a skill before I play Thousand Cuts. It's not. Uh, but Terror Eviscerate is a kill, yes? Yes. Perfect lethal on both of them. That was satisfying. There's the second flechette. So what about Blade Dance Plus when we have 4,000 cuts, though? This also seems pretty ridiculous. I'm going to take the upgraded card here. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Um, I do have a fear potion. What do you have footwork? Okay, we can do footwork, defend, defend. Bank one energy. What if I eviscerate, backstab three times? Sixteen times three plus thirty-nine. We can do 87 damage. This opponent is 86 health. That sounds like a kill. Right, this is 39, this is 16, 16, 16. Which is actually, yeah, that is 48. Yes. Yeah. Do it. And you enjoy those 200 turns of vulnerable. All right, that was a pretty good fight. Good use of a potion. Took basically no damage to Shelled Parasite and Avocado on the third floor of the act. That's pretty good. And there's our prepared. Finally. Get in here. Even unupgraded, it's more than welcome. We'll, we'll definitely upgrade that basically ASAP. And uh, life's going to be good with Eviscerate being cheap a lot more often now. It's also another skill for both Flechettes and the Escape Plan to synergize with. Pretty cool. Triple birds shouldn't be a problem. Although it's a shame I can only play one of these thousand cuts. To keep the other energy. Have I ever had a 200 turn fight before? Yes. Yes, I have. Of course, I deliberately prolonged it. But I, I had to uh, had to stall heart for as long as I could at one point during a, a silly multicolor run, just to prove I could. And it was super worth it. The damage. <clears throat> the damage. Yeah, that was the infinite Wraith form heart fight with frost orbs to block the... The Beat of Death. Pretty cool. Second Blade Dance is here. Unupgraded this time. I don't actually think I want that. Uh, I have priority upgrades for Prepared and Adrenaline currently. Everything else is just max out to me. Actually, maybe I should have taken Acrobatics there. Yeah, probably should have. Unupgraded, though, it's, it's, it's not quite enough. Not quite. Um, are we going to go for that Burning Elite? That's my question. I think the answer is likely to be no. Well, maybe, actually. Hold on, we'll see. The upgrade prepared here, that's for sure. Not going to fight the Elite right in front of me when I could upgrade this important card. And we're going to either get bonus strength on turn one or transform two cards. Actually, bonus strength on turn one would let, let us fight the Burning Elite quite decisively, actually. That that makes this path much more viable to go for three Elites this act. A few more upgrades. Yes, yes, let's do it. 
Let's do it. Get the card Mutagenic Strength. At this end of your first turn, lose three strength. You could also consider the Jax itself as a, a way to directly gain strength. Uh, and this would actually be a, a decent candidate run for double Jax. Interesting. But we also haven't won a run with the Mutagenic Strength, and this is certainly the, the run for it. So give me that. Start each combat with three strength. At the end of the first turn, lose three strength. The DMD, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Do I thousand cuts here? I'm gonna go with yes. We have to play at least one of them. Excellent. Wow, that damage. This was our super elite, by the way. Now it's dead. And we have a question card, giving us more options at card rewards, which is going to make it easier to find draw discard stuff or upgrade itself. Outmaneuver plus with ice cream. Okay. You got me. That looks pretty good. And an emerald key. And a shovel? No. A sapphire key. And some extremely dead foes. Oh my. Jesus. So yeah, mutagenic strength seems like it's pretty good. Second eviscerate. We have not had a run with double eviscerate. This is a very good candidate run for that. Riddle with holes theoretically has some value. Let's take the second eviscerate. Double eviscerate. Don't mind if I do. That's the other benefit to the question card. It's going to make it easier to get uh, card masteries accomplished, which we quite like. So we only, yeah, we're full blocking. Okay, good. Satisfying. Keep one energy. Being able to have an energy free to play the outmaneuver so that we can then have lots of energy to use is, is definitely going to be crucial for some of the longer fights for this deck. Four damage per card. Seems great. Voodoo doll. For each curse of the deck, we have one point of strength. Simply having one more strength is excellent. And there's the reflex. Get in here. If this card is discarded from your hand, draw two. Welcome. That is what we're looking for, for sure. Eviscerate and Outmaneuver. Let's just use both of those. We hit most Cultists. Or Chosen. I'm going to go for Chosen here. Maybe even wanted to Fire Potion that? I don't think so, though. Oh. 
I guess I'll use a fire potion here, though. Seems fine. There's a second escape plan, or we can get a nightmare. It's a pretty good deck for a second escape plan. Especially with footwork already in the deck. Nightmare to duplicate the adrenaline or the reflex could be quite something, though. But yeah, it feels quite heavy. We have a hard time affording it prior to the outmaneuver being played. I think we'll just take the escape plan, which also, again, has a free upgrade on it. At this shop, we can afford a card remove or bag of marbles. Oh, man. Although we don't even need Bag of Marbles that much, because we do have Double Terror. So we're often making enemies vulnerable on turn one anyway. Uh, although removing Artifact from later game foe is also quite welcome. But when I could simply remove a Strike, I don't know, I don't love it that much. Let's lose a Strike instead. Not like this fight's gonna go any different, right? Right? Well, actually. Specifically, this fight. Twenty-two. Hmm. Alright, let's do it this way. Play exactly four more cards, so I think we get to kill two, right? Yeah, you're super dead. Works for me. Take seven, win the fight. I'll, t I'll, I'll take that. Ooh, we get a preserved insect and ghost in a jar. Talk about amazing rewards here. Future elites will be easy to kill. Gonna kill Repto on turn one, probably. And we have intangibility for later in the run. Calculated gamble seems like where it's at. Allowing us to discard our hand and draw more cards. Definitely like that, especially with Shiv generating stuff. Uh, we do have a few more priority upgrades here. Again, Adrenaline, Reflex, and Calculated Gamble are the priorities. I'm gonna upgrade the Reflex first. Expertise not too bad either, actually, but I think if we get the reflex thing to work, we're not going to need it. So here's a fight where Bag of Marbles wouldn't have done a thing on turn one. At all. At all at all. Might as well play this to avoid redrawing it. Yes. Thousand Cuts defeats the minions anyway. Or so one would like to think. The footwork gamble draw six here. Three for the three cards in our hand, plus three for discarding reflex. Get these minions out of here. She probably didn't want to play that backflip. That was supposed to be defend, defend, out maneuver. This works though. Weaken stacking is definitely why we upgraded what we upgraded neutralize for. Squiddy love, thanks for the gifted sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club, Dromega. And get out of here, collector. GG. Very clean fight there. No problems at all. Another copy of Thousand Cuts. An Alchemy is actually a bit less valuable now that we have a Ghost in a Jar. 
Gotta say though, malaise looks nice and juicy here, especially with ice cream. We can save up a bunch of energy. This is a particularly useful solve for any fight that gives us trouble for playing too many cards. Uh, a solve for Time Eater and Awakened One, especially. So I quite like it for that reason. Snow Eagle, thanks for 10 months of support. Let's take that malaise. Well, if that's not an ideal time to take Calling Bell, I don't know what is. We get a bonus strength and three relics. And this could be a good run to duplicate the curse, believe it or not. To get the mastery done. So I have an additional thought behind it. I'd also say if we broadly speaking want more energy, Philosopher's Stone is an easy take here. Because we can remove that extra strength with the malaise. But I believe in I believe in Calling Bell here. The bell tolls. Get an unplayable, unremovable curse. We get Shuriken, Smiling Mask, and a fossilized helix. Heck yeah, that's worth it. The Smiling Mask will more than counteract the curse. The Shuriken is oodles of damage. And the Helix is, well, it's a fossilized freaking helix, man. Heck yeah. And now we can be relatively aggro with card removes, too. We almost want to remove a one of the three pack stabs. Almost. We do want more backflips and acrobatics. How are there 29 cards? It's not really 29 cards. That's how I feel about it. It's secretly less than that. Heck, we could even take 999 gold pretty comfortably from an event here. Well, that would be nice, too. Sounds good. Okay, let's go to shops because of the smiling mask. Shops are primo here. Okay, I admit, Vega Marbles would be good here. Kill the middle one, too. Actually, no, kill the front one as well. Come back to life, but we've got time. Or do we? All right, Thousand Cuts Blade Dance ought to be enough. We also know Calculated Gamble will draw adrenaline, so this is fun. Shuriken is strong. Especially when we already start with two strength, I suppose. There's an acrobatics. Okay, we skipped the last one we saw. I don't think we should make the same mistake here. Now that we have two eviscerates, especially. And a reflex. Get in here. For all three, discard one is good stuff. Oh, and we can upgrade two. Let's upgrade the adrenaline first. Uh, although upgrading Calculated Gamble and Acrobatics are also deeply appealing thoughts to me. Currently we need energy quite badly, since I was foolhardy enough to not take a boss energy relic. What was wrong with me? Why wouldn't I do that? Come on. Get it together, Baylor. Two skills, huh? I'll show you two skills. Wait. Show you three skills. Yeah. That's also the reason I didn't take the Alchemize, is we kill stuff on turn one, and then there's no time to play the Alchemize. Second Adrenaline? Heck yeah. That's like upgrading the first Adrenaline, but better. Sweet. Frozen Eye. Ooh. Ooh, Frozen Eye's a good good thing. Knowing exactly what we're going to draw, that lets us make the, sure the escape plans always work. Amongst many other very, very, very useful effects. Heck yeah. We won't slow down much to make use of this Frozen Eye, but the, just the, the power of knowing exactly which line of randomness we've received is incredibly useful. 
And we get a bonus treasure chest containing an ink bottle, which will also know what it's going to draw. Extremely, extremely useful. That's genuinely really important information. And knowing exactly where the footwork is is also quite nice. Neat. Let's start with that. Just need to survivor. Don't need to backflip then. Sure. I also know whether it's worth drawing for flechettes or not. That's also quite nice. Twenty-eight times three. Heck yeah. I should have drawn Calc Gamble before I played that. Man. Yeah. It's, oh, there's so much going on here. Sword. Also, I killed Giant Head on turn one, by the way. Accuracy plus? I don't even feel like we need it. We've only got the one Blade Dance anyway. So again, what would Mega Marbles even do, is my question. We're going this way. This looks like the right way. We want to upgrade Calc Gamble. We want to remove another card. We want to fight two more elites. Yeah, this is the right way. Definitely going to struggle with Beat of Death against Hearts. We're hoping that maybe another Relic we find can change that. Yeah, knowing exactly what Calc Gamble's gonna draw, invaluable information. Truly invaluable information. So, actually, wait, we just do this, right? Seems good. Prayer Wheel. Normal enemies will drop more card rewards. I mean, we'll get one more, and with Singing Bowl, that's probably at least two max out, if nothing else. Could take Cloak and Nagger, but I think without upgrades, we just want to be taking max HP here. Would After Image be good here? Definitely. I'd also like another Footwork, quite, quite happily. More max health, also pretty useful in terms of surviving the late game. All of those will be adequate here. Gamble will draw into the adrenaline. Okay, sure. Let me play the other a thousand cuts. Or I can play that footwork. I don't have to play the escape plan. I can do both. Let's do both. Talk. Then if he's got a, a relatively long fight, so if we're gonna be here a while. Might as well make it worth it. Wait, why is that a Viserite one cost? This raid is a weird card. No, it's not. One cost. Okay. So that's a lot. Is that a this right one cost? Because it's not. He's lying to me. Acrobatics plus or prepared plus. I think we want the Acro to increase the number of cards in our hands. Backflip's also not too bad. And the second card reward has a second outmaneuver. Uh, more importantly, however, it has a Tactician. Yoink. And yoink. 
and upgrade that tactician immediately. The Mulhalabi, thanks for three months of, and the Prime sub. Appreciate you keeping it cozy. No orange pellets for me, just card removes, please. Card removes on defend. Deeply questionable. Here we go. Another treasure chest. How many random treasure chests have I had this run? Two or three at least. With bottled lightning inside. So we can bottle either adrenaline plus or calculated gamble plus. Depending on our preferences. Or acrobatics plus. All are really, 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 really good. Gamble is particularly sweet on turn one. Kind of like a bag of prep, uh, kind of like a gambling chip with our nine card opening hands. Pretty absurd. Hmm. Oh wait, no, I can just backflip into the stuff. Good. We escape plan, backflip, draw both tactician and reflex, then calculated gamble. Heck yeah. The perfection. I think we're gonna kill Giant Head on turn one again. With the world's most powerful flechettes. Check this out. 29 times 7. Dang. It's the power. And I'm not even done the turn. Yep. Eternal Feather. Okay, that'll bring us all the way to full health. Second copy of Reflex. Let's go. All the cards in my hand, please. And we have to recall before Taymator here. So that we have all three keys. Remember, the plan is to use Malaise with Ice Cream to kill Time Eater somehow. I think that's the plan. We have Footwork in the opening hand, which is definitely appreciated. We can set up Outmaneuver into Malaise if we draw the correct number of cards. Or I can just do a giant malaise turn one if I don't do that. Honestly, just doing a giant malaise turn one sounds great to me. Let's do that. Although... If the malaise is even bigger on turn two... have neutralized. No, let's just draw to it now. Seems fine. Also, this does 11 times, 16 times 7, so I'm definitely going to play it. That's too much damage to ignore. Survive with the Tactician. Eviscerate one more time. No. Outmaneuver and then Malaise. Actually, does it even matter that I Malaise if we bring Time Eater below half on this turn? I guess it doesn't really, huh? We get to keep our buffer, though. That's nice. We're not quite below half, either. Fine. Maybe that's for the best. We might be able to skip phase two if we do this correctly, then. I guess let's see. Oof, that is not the draw you want. Good lord. 
That is certainly not it. Wow, next turn's gonna be pretty butts. All right, that's fine. We need to full block this as well. So I do, I wanted just to make the one card. Draw the Tactician. Next turn we play Thousand Cuts, that's it. We could Gambler's Brew, but I don't think we need to. This fight is well underhand. Uh, we're actually getting minus one draw now that I think about it, so I won't even draw a thousand cuts unless I play two cards this turn. Okay. So Time Eater purges debuffs. I play this. Good turn. And we're back at it. This part's not ideal. But I'm okay with that. Again, I'd, I'd much rather have this potion for the end game here. We have plenty of health to spare, and this is going to be the only difficult boss fight. I have no fear. Not here. Play the right number of cards each turn, and great things happen to us. Note that Time Eater's health seems to be vanishing at a very, very fast rate. Deck does a lot of damage. Another bad turn, that's okay. Really gonna have to watch out for those during the heart fight, especially. Or turns like this, I guess. Also pretty bad. Another situation that could demand the use of the potion to save a lot of health. But I don't think it should. Oh, if we play three cards, we draw this right. That's true. We can do that. Yeah. Ah, yeah, we don't even need to. It's easy, easy peasy. Easy peasy. And yes, this Gambler's Brew might be better than a Ghost in a Jar, with, uh, with the Frozen Eye especially. Okay, we do have Acrobatics. So we can do some crazy stuff here. Okay. Let's start this. that. And then what? Play Outmaneuver. Calculated Gamble. Draw the Bazillion cards. Yeah. Get the energy for next turn, too. You get a Terror. Everybody gets a Terror. What about a thousand cuts? Do we get that? We could actually beat this fight without maybe even harming the uh, cultists, although I think that'll be difficult to do without playing the thousand cuts. No, it seems kind of absurd, doesn't it? Well, actually... Some more energy next turn, please. Bottles on nine. That's 
pretty good. Okay. Stop there. The turn that never ends, that's right. Wait a minute, Mr. Streamer, that's illegal. You can't just go around nerding birds like that. They'll lock you up. For bird nerdery. And murdery. You know? It's a crime. Ish. End of line, huh? Very well. That maneuver, defend. I'm sorry that you have to take spike damage, my friends, but you did this to yourself. in hand, so I'm going to discard all these shivs with Blade Dance. Fix that particular problem. And then we're kind of free to do what we want here. Thirteen by six. GG! Be free, my bird friends! And be free, my buffer, too. Onwards! To Act Four. To thump, to thump, a deep, pulsing dread can be found throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of unlimited power for five easy payments of three ninety nine? What a run, huh? Deck slaps, just slaps. I put acro reflex or adrenaline. I think adrenaline. Maybe backflip was the correct answer. Would like a little bit more block. Can't afford apotheosis, but we can't afford one last remove. Or concentrate. Hmm. Exact money for Concentrate, too. Mostly lets me discard Reflexes. That can be pretty good. Let's try it. I'm not... Not inclined to believe it's actually going to be all that good here, but I'll try it. Beat of Death is indeed going to be what they say what they call a problem for Shurzis here. Uh, these elites, however, will not be a problem, you know? Times eight. Seems pretty good. Let's just set up ink bottle for the hearts. I think that's the only thing we can reasonably do here. Of any consequence at all. Happy Flower, that's going to help quite a bit by providing energy on the third turns. We could take a second Tactician, or an Expertise, or a Quick Slash, or Alchemize. I actually think the Expertise might be crucial more than anything for turns where we're stuck with few cards in hand. Draw until you have six in hand. Let's take that. 
Since we took the concentrate, this seems like the pick. I've already had two tacticians, so we don't need this one. Capra... Capraz Baglar asks, can you escape spire, spire Spear and Shield with a smoke bomb if you kill one of them? Yes, you have to kill one of them in order to escape with a smoke bomb. Or if you're feeling very tricky, you can throw the smoke bomb at the very beginning of combat before the game loads the surrounded status effect onto you. This is definitely cheating, but it does work. And yes, you will run in the correct direction, also. Oh, those are good guards. But, Beat of Death, again, presenting a problem here, because we can only block so much. Hmm. So with Survivor, I can only play four cards. Unless I were to use the Gambler's Brew to get the escape plan down. That actually seems like it might be crucial here. Let's do that. Let's discard... I'm going to discard Flechettes here. But work is the second card. Now we need to make sure escape plan is the third or fourth card. And then we need to draw towards the other block cards in this deck for the moment. We'll be able to rely on Buffer to block the big attack headed our way, but we need to get set up as much as we can here. So I think if I'm going to Gambler's Brew, I should Acrobatics. So that we have as many cards in hand as possible here. I'm going to lose this Thousand Cuts the moment. So, what do I want to draw into here? We have nine cards in hand, two Adrenalines, Escape Plan. Many, many cards that are coming up that are skills. Next card has to be the Escape Plan, though, I believe. So it sounds like gambling for seven is pretty good. Gamble everything except the Adrenalines draw all of these cards, and then escape plan draws out maneuver. And that'll give us the block to keep playing cards this turn without losing the buffer. Then acrobatics will draw to the backflip. Perfect, and we can keep going from there. Yes, discard seven. Keep the two adrenalines, I suppose. So again, top card. Oh, it's not out maneuver. I miscounted here. That's fine. Still get the block. And now we can play a few more cards. We still get to draw to the backflip, so all is well here. Let's go with Concentrate first. Definitely gonna discard Blade Dance. I suppose I'll discard Neutralize as well. We're probably gonna play Malaise here to ensure that the stuff works. So let's discard these three. Then we want to go Adrenaline, Acrobatics, keep the Sitter's Bane in the hand here. I think I'm going to want the Serrate. Skip Thousand Cuts for the moment. This is really not the fight for Thousand Cuts to do a whole lot. Here's where upgrading the backflip would have really made a lot made a lot of sense to me. Let's go terror. Outmaneuver. Is Malazing for three enough? Having the weaken go into next cycle seems important. So Malaise for five sounds pretty good. Without maneuver, it's fine, right? Uh, and if I want to play the eviscerate, I should play a block card also. So four turns of weakness, plus neutralize. That should be enough, right? Hopefully that'll be enough. All right. Um, didn't think about what I'm drawing into here. Oh, shoot. 
Okay, we didn't draw the burn. Thank goodness. I almost goofed that pretty hard. That could have gone so much worse. Actually, the burn still might stop our buffer. Shoot. That would be a problem for us. I guess we have Ghost Najar in that uh, circumstance. But I'd really strongly prefer... Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, that didn't want to work out. Shoot. So we either use the Ghost in Jar or we lose 46 health. The next big hit is not going to do 46 damage, so I suppose we should just use the Ghost in Jar. Yeah, we done goofed. We done goofed. Just where Gambler's Brew would have been nice. Why does the buffer not work? Because the burn is going to hit the buffer, and then the heart is going to hit us. So we might as well do this then. There's no YOLO with the escape plan. We knew exactly what it was drawing. Nothing. Absolute nothingness. Am I discarding this terror? We need to draw to that neutralize this turn. We can make that happen, right? Yeah, we can. Because then... Oh, no, I can't, actually. Oh, shoot. Oh, we're in such trouble here. Okay, Expertise will save us next turn. This is getting gnarly. And not the good kinds. Good news is we're doing tons of damage here. Not playing Blade Dance. Next turn we play... Oh shoot, wait. No, next turn I draw the Reflex uselessly? Ew. Man, we really got hosed here. Shoot. So we're just going to eat the full damage of that attack with no weakness to stop it. I knew I should have released for five. Uh, yeah, good thing we have 88 health, but it's not going to be enough if we just eat all of this to our face. I guess we save Ink Bottle for the turn after, huh? Fortunately, I don't think the Blade Dance is doing much for us. Like, the Ink Bottle can't get us to the Expertise, which is what we need to draw. There's Thousand Cuts. We didn't play them. Is the multi-attack first? Let's just go defend, defend. Don't even play neutralize here, is that true? Yes, because we need, don't want to draw a reflex uselessly next turn. I want to be able to discard it for value here so that we can maybe stay alive. Good luck to us. So let's start with Acrobatics to Reflex here. Draw a lot of cards. Okay. Skill on top. Not a skill. So just draw two, discard two. Yes. gambling sooner or later here. We've got acrobatics as well. We can play a lot of block cards this turn is the good news. 
I guess let's just thousand cuts then. We need to get this out of here. Keep the wounds. It's not a skill. Beat of death is going to be a problem, though. Hmm. All right, concentrate to make a room in hand is the next step, I suppose. We don't need out maneuver anymore. Get rid of this, this, certainly that too. And then acrobatics. Maybe some block here. Okay. Want to draw five with gamble? Minimum. We play this, and this, this, this. Perfect. Discard this. Do some damage. Draw some more cards. Draw some more cards. Make some block. And draw some more cards. All right, all seems to be going pretty well here. Everything's coming together. blocks. Spooky turn, though, hey? Set ink bottle to nine. Ooh, that's a weird turn. Good enough. Good enough. Stay weak, that might save our life. We're about to get Beat of Death 3, which is going to be a very big problem for us. Not sure what to do about that. Oh, I guess we can just win. That's something we can do about it. it seems like a good strategy. Definitely appreciating expertise. Kind of tying this all together for us. Alright, damage cap achieved. That is not an acceptable next turn. Try again. That looks a bit better. Actually, make sure all of this garbage is in the discard pile. These curses. And out maneuver one more time. So escape plan. Escape plan. Yeah, we can make that work. Yeah, that'll work. Great fight, Mr. Hart. What a run. Wow, ink bottle just saved my bacon there. That was great. Good job, Ink Bottle. Alright, Gamble, discard all this nonsense. What do we got? Easy. Just a handful of greatness. Excellent. The flechettes of the gods. 16 by 9. GG. The ultimate flechettes. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.